Let me tell you about By the time 2004 rolled around, the Wu-Tang Clan were in a completely different place than they were over 10 years prior. They had four albums under their belt as a collective group, and every member had at least one album out. Hell, some members had a decent discography in their ranks, with some bona fide classics out there. That was everyone except Masakilla, the last member to join the clan who almost didn't end up on 36 Chambers. Masakilla was more prolific on subsequent releases and throughout solo outings from the other members of the group, though, and had generated some hype in circles as his own solo release, Silence, continued. This silence was intentional, too. Masakilla considered himself a component of the group solely, with not much to contribute alone for the longest time. Enter the production of the subject of today's video. An album consciously released independently to not get swept up in the label machine. An album consciously built like a 90s Wu-Tang project with who made the beats and the style within it. An album that feels like a love letter to what made Wu-Tang captivating to begin with. One that is dramatically underrated in the pantheon of solo Wu-Tang projects that I'll be talking about today. It is the debut album by Masterkilla, No Said Date. You know, when I was in college and I was combing through the Wu-Tang Clan solo discography out of morbid curiosity and pure joy, when I got to Masakilla's No Said Date, it felt like a whirlwind of fun in a way that a lot of what the solo Wu-Tang catalog wasn't really doing in 2004. When in the intro I talked about Masakilla saying he felt like more of a component of a group as opposed to a solo artist, that still feels like a the case with this solo album. And I feel like it's to its credit because this does feel like a great collection of Wu-Tang vibe jams. You know, a lot of what the 90s stuff was doing uh, gets shown to prominence in sample choice, feature, collaboration coming together, and just the overall tone of the project. But Master Killer's personality does get to cut through in some really good circumstances. You know, the intro itself feels like something Master Killer would have handpicked because of how it represents himself. While also touching on the themes of reflection and nostalgia of a group collective that the album crops up in some of its skits and sample choices. Tracks like the title track uh, and Last Drink feel like great story-driven tracks uh, by Master Killer showcasing both sides of his personality. Hell, the focus on TV sampling on uh, tracks like Love Spell and Old Man also feel like, I don't know, something that fits here for Masticilla of all people. And I love the sample choices done. I think that the use of the Cheers intro and the outro of Last Drink sp uh, spins really well into Love Spell. And I'll talk about Old Man more in depth in the Sanford and Son uh, sample choice fucking slaps. I also love the Otis sample on DTD. I feel like the sample choice and no set date given it's the same sample that Outkast did for Skew It on the Barbie, the Raekwon feature track, also felt like a conscious decision by uh, Master Killa as far as trying to get the production to fit his overall piece of the puzzle. Speaking of the performances outside of Master Killa, uh, DTD shows the Raekwon Ghostface combo thriving so very well. That track is so good. I think Killer Priest and Method Man do wonders on Secret Rivals. Fucking Old Dirty Bastard on Old Man works so perfectly. His Red Fox impression slaps, and I feel like it's one of my favorite ODB features he's ever laid down. And I think the RZA is a great component of that track as well. And speaking of the RZA, he gets to throw that digital vibe out there on Digi Warfare so perfectly. And Silverbacks also sees uh, Inspector Decked in Jizza coming in and laying down some great heat. I also think that having a track like The Future also fits incredibly well in the overall presentation of this project, you know? A lot of the skit work seems to be in thematics of reflection and looking ahead, and I feel like it's a great component where you hear these kids rapping in the style of some of the Wu-Tang Clan members. You know, I, I enjoy this project a lot. I think that it's a delight. I feel like it's also a very slept-on project in the Wu-Tang solo, disc solo discography. Which is funny because at the time of release, the album was so very heavily praised, and it's seen, critically anyway, as like a very well composed record. I just don't feel like it's up there in discussion with records like Supreme Clientele and Cuban Links as one of the great solo albums from this collective unit. Yeah, three of the songs were in Saints Row and they were great picks for that game. I just feel like as time has gone on, this album seemingly isn't brought up in conversation quite enough, which is why 
why I wanted to talk about it today. And this is one of my favorite solo Wu-Tang records, uh, because I think the production is clean. I think Master Killer, for has slept on as I feel like he is in the group himself, gets to shine really well as a solo unit, you know? And, and again, it feels like great Wu-Tang nostalgia and Wu-Tang worship. It feels like a love letter to fans of the group collectively. Now with that said, I wouldn't say that this is my favorite Wu-Tang solo record. You know, I do intend to make a list like that at some point in the future, but I just think that No Said Date is very slept on and I feel like it has a lot of strengths and good things going on for it. Do I love every song on it? No, but I think that as a whole collectively, it's got a really good pace. Um, again, it's, it's, it's relatively tight, all things consider and I feel like a lot of what Master Killa and the producers at hand the Killa Bees on the track uh, just shine in really good ways that I feel like are worth your time and that was more the purpose of this video you know I do again intend to do a favorite Wu-Tang solo outing video list in the future but if I'm not doing it in wu Brewery and I do want to focus on solo albums I felt like I would be doing it a service to myself as a fan of this group if I didn't showcase Master Kill is no said date and just put it out there. If you slept on it, don't sleep on it anymore. It's a really good album. Uh, but that's that's my piece on it. I know Master Kill has done other things in his discography, and I don't like him as much as No Said Date, but I think that No Said Date was definitely uh, an incredibly strong first outing from the guy. But those are my thoughts on No Said Date. Do you like it? Let me know your thoughts on No Said Date in the comments down below. Let me know some of your favorite songs. If you like this review, be sure to give it a like. If you want to see more of my music, gaming, and general notary content, be sure to subscribe. Special thanks to my patrons if you want to join the ranks to get early access to content, exclusive content, or to help drive the community. It's linked in the description. My Wu-Tang themed playlist went live a couple of days ago. If you want to see uh, a playlist showcasing some of Wu-Tang and pop culture, some of my favorite features they've done, or just some of their production getting to shine, it's linked in the description. I'm going to get out of here, though. Thank you again so very much for watching. I have been Viral Rack. You guys have good days, lives, and situations, and I'll see you another day.